today we're joining the team with Mix. What are you saying, man? Thanks for having me on. All good, all good. No problem. How you been, man? Yeah, good, man. Just working, you know, you know how it is. Literally, literally. It hasn't been the toughest. Well, it has been the toughest year for a lot definitely, of people. Definitely, so definitely, yeah. How have, you, how have you kind of stayed afloat in terms of. Uh, make loads of beats, basically, yeah. in my bedroom, to be fair. Fair it's kind of a perfect situation. Like I, don't, I left school early, got no work to go to, so just lock in and make beats, basically. All right, so basically, I started making beats about halfway through year 10. I think it was 2017, I think, about March. And it's because of, uh, it was a Genius Deconstructed video by TM88 for the mm. beat of EXO Tour Life. Mm. And that, that, when that song came out, I just loved the song. And it was a great song. And then the Deconstructed came out, and I was like, wow, like this is amazing. He's made this beat, and it, it looked... The way he made it look, it made it look easy. Yeah. It's not easy, but <laughs> I then thought I could just carry on. So I downloaded FL. Yeah. And I just started watching YouTube tutorials, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So is it mainly FL you use or are they, Yeah, are they pretty much stuff, all I've ever oh. used to be fair. Oh, most. Wow. wow. So in terms of um artists you've worked with, can you kind of talk us through how some of those collaborations happen? Because I know you've got quite a few names oh. and accolades on, under your nice, yeah. So, so the first, my first placement was with Desi, which was also his first song as well. And that was the collaboration beat with SJ, mm. SJ the producer. And he sent that beat to Desi. Mm. So I didn't really have any control over how it got to him. Yeah. But then from then, it obviously got my name out. People would have known who I am. Yeah. It was Desi's first song. He had a big backing from Heady, yeah, which okay. kind of helped a lot. Okay. And then just from there, a lot of YouTube uploading with my frosty gliding yeah. on his uh, under surveillance tape. That was just, he found it on YouTube, yeah. hit me up on DM and just said, I'm going to use this beat. Can you email it to me and stuff? So, so I could say I got lucky for that one, to be yeah. fair, but. Now, what, what's, what's, what's the feeling like? Because I know, like, obviously, a lot of people, well, some people um, use the YouTube route. And yeah. um, they may not have as, as many results, but obviously it depends on what the artist is looking for. Um, if they're feeling a bit or not, so what's the, what's the feeling like when when a man DMs you and be like, yo, I messed with this? See, with Frosty, it was mad because Frosty, before I even made beats from County Lines back when he released County, I've been following him for time. Like I've yeah. been fucking with Frosty, like, and then see him in my DMs, DMing me, I was like, wow, that's quite mad. Like I didn't even have to reach out to him. Yeah. So it felt it felt kind of like, wow, I must be doing something right. Yeah. So as of current, obviously you're still developing in. In, in, your, in your producing Yeah, career. definitely, yeah. Um, so what kind of advice would you give to yourself, to, to, to your previous self, so to your, to your 15, 16 year old self or when you, uh, first, when you first picked up the... Definitely don't overcomplicate your beats. Stop trying to add sounds because people, like other producers are telling you to do so. Like, just make what sounds right. Yeah. And if, if you overfill it, rappers can't, they can't rap on it. They can't yeah. fit in the gaps. And then like yeah. all of my placements have been like, maximum like 10 sounds in the beat to be fair so like so how, how many packs do you usually send when they when they ask you uh say if, if someone says like uh let me send me some beats i'll send like maybe like a 15 pack yeah 20 pack something like that but it really okay. depends on who it is yeah how much i want the placement with them like yeah. if i want the placement i'll send the as many beats there. as i can the best okay. beats i can like do you think do you think that's do you think it's necessarily quality over quantity or uh is it work? Is, or it's is it work just quality overall I say it's a bit of both. People say quality over quantity, mm. but you do at the same time need to get enough beats out there to yeah. be able to like get seen and get noticed. Like yeah. you can make one banging beat a month. Yeah. That's great, but if you have one upload a month, yeah. you're not really gonna get that many views, that many new exposure to people. So it's true. And in terms of your packs, do you construct it in a way or is it just kind of just put all all it all of it in once or is it like you, t you take the artist through I um, sort of just, I listen to it myself, yeah. <laughs> I see if I'm feeling it, yeah. if I'm feeling it, I'll whack it in. Okay. If I'm not so much feeling it myself, yeah. I'll still double think, like, will the artist like this? Because with beats, a producer, a producer's a player, the producers have a lot of issues yeah. where they sort of, if they're not feeling the beat, they don't upload it, they don't send it out. But mm. it's because you've made it and you've heard it, it's boring to you. Mm. Whereas, like, an artist who's never heard this beat before, they might hear it and think, yeah, that's the shit, like, I'm going to make something with this right now, like... Yeah. So it's a very key thing not to over criticize yourself, I'd yeah, say, as well. For the most part, what I've kind of seen is some producers, if they're kind of over criticizing, that then nothing ends up going up. Yeah, because they don't think yeah. everything, they don't think anything they've got is good enough, so they yeah. won't send it out, they won't do this. You just have to believe yeah. in what you're doing yourself. So your, your advice is always kind of try to put yourself out there. Definitely, yeah. Regardless. Even if you haven't got, in your opinion, the best beats, yeah. still show people what you're doing so they, they can see your progress as well. Yeah. So that kind of helps. If they see an old beat, but they see a new one, they're like, wow, this guy 
it's been this short of time, he's got yeah. this much better. Yeah. They might want to start working with you and stuff yeah. like that. So that's that's a very good point because sometimes when you put, obviously your old beats, they're, they're they're from a space or kind of a time where you're going for X Y Z. And yeah, definitely. That compared to your new beats, so it kind of shows the journey. Of yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like um, about yeah. a year ago, my beats are so different compared to what they are now. Yeah. It's not so much like I've consciously tried to make them different. Like yeah. you said, it's just external factors. Yeah. It all takes part. What your mood's like. Yeah. What's going on in your life. Stuff like that. Yeah. It all plays effects. All good, all good. Um, and one thing I kind of want to touch upon, not everyone likes to discuss this, but the, the, the business element. Yeah, love yeah. Creators, love creators are just kind of called create, create. Create, create, business. yeah, yeah, but definitely. The, the business element, man, is, is, is it's It's the key, to be fair, yeah. It's, it's over 50% of making beats and becoming a successful producer, yeah. I'd say. Because yeah. like anyone, not anyone can make beats, but someone can sit there and make beats. They can have all these beats. Yeah. But if you're not getting them to the right places yeah. and the right people, you, you're not going to really get anywhere, to yeah. be fair. Yeah, so in terms of kind of behind the scenes with the business, how, how do you kind of handle your elements so, um, when it comes to, well, if, if you want to disclose like, um, certain percentages, royalties, etc., and any experiences you've had in the past where it hasn't gone to the best ability that, that, it, can, that it could have Oh, yeah, so song. speaking of that, that's a good, that's a good point, actually, because uh, the song M24... And like the M24 featuring yeah. Tion Wayne, yeah. London. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit of an issue for me because yeah. I made the melody, yeah. but it was stolen. Like, I made a whole beat with that melody. It's yeah. on my channel, all yeah. of that. And then that song came out. And then someone in my YouTube comments on my beat said, "Oh, mad that they used this beat for London." And I was like, "Serious?" I was like, "Hang on, like I, I don't know anything about. I didn't even know yeah. what the song was at the time. It just come out." So I went to have a look and I listened to it and I was like. Yeah, that melody is exactly the same. And it wasn't just the melody, it was the vox as well, like the yeah. vocal thing. So yeah. it was completely cut from yeah. my beat. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, wow, like this song's doing numbers. It's oh, yeah. my melody mm -hmm. and I've got no credit, I've got no money, I need to do something about yeah. this. So I, what I did, which I was lucky that worked, is I just sent a YouTube copyright complaint mm. and they got the video taken down within a day because the evidence was there that I'd uploaded it first. Yeah. So they just reviewed it, saw that and said, yeah. oh right, yeah, that's your content. We'll yeah. take it down. And then because it got taken down, yeah. M24's manager got into contact with me yeah. because they couldn't have the song down because yeah. it was doing views, it was bound yeah. to do well. So they were trying to sort it ASAP. I was at school, funnily enough. Oh, wow. So I was on the phone yeah. to Tion Wayne, then his manager school. at school. <laughs> had to keep going in and out. And it was yeah. that was weird. I was like, wow, I'm talking to like, Celebrities yeah, at school, school, like, literally. so yeah. So, like, going go through that experience, because it's like, I feel that like someone's kind of taken, like, the credibility away from you. Yeah, because you've put your creative yeah. process into that. Yeah. You've made the beat. It's, it's your, like, yeah. the other person's just took the melody and put some, like, yeah. I don't want to say dead drums, but they're not the best drums on yeah. top of it. Yeah. So, would you, would you say if the song wasn't, didn't have that popularity or didn't blow as much, would you say, that um, there was the managers would have, have reached out to you or would it, did, did they just reach out to you regardless of if the song I feel like they only reached out because they would be losing money from yeah. the situation. Yeah. If it was um, a smaller song that wasn't making yeah. too much money, I don't feel like they would have been yeah. so active in trying to get yeah. me paid and get it all sorted out. Okay, okay. No, obviously it all, it all comes down to, at the end of the day, like moral standards. You know what I mean? Yeah, if definitely. Someone else's products. It's of, stealing, like, realistically. Yeah, yeah. Like, you wouldn't, you're like you know, you seen them adverts. Like you wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't. St why you steal a film? Why would you steal someone's melody? Literally, literally. You know, that's obviously ups and downs. That's one of the yeah. situations you you gladly learn from. And you're yeah, able. definitely. And if anything, it was one of the better things to happen in my career for just getting not like getting that recognition. Yeah. Because it was a big song, and the whole controversy of the melody being stolen, I think, yeah. added to it as well. Yeah. No, no. It definitely, you definitely took the right steps to buy. You know, what I mean going for YouTube straight away, trying to get it taken down, also trying to protect yourself as well. Um, yeah. Whether it be legally or whatnot. But um, through other people, that, through people that, obviously speaking from your experience, how would you best advise others to um, on how to kind of um, react or how to go about it when situations that are similar kind of happen to them? Whether uh, it be um, them stealing or them get, not getting their, their check from? Uh, what I'd say is just, it's your creation. You don't, don't, you don't need to feel bad about trying to like I could have felt bad oh I've got the song taken but that's my yeah. creation has been stolen so don't don't feel bad you know you have to be kind of selfish yeah. within the scene and 
just just do I don't really, I got kind of lucky to be fair because yeah. I wouldn't have expected the YouTube copyright complaint to work okay. but it did yeah. so like and then whilst I was at school like I yeah. said I just ended up getting all these phone calls DMs I was like whoa yeah okay. and then from there yeah so so did, did did YouTube email you directly or did you have to contact someone? Oh, uh, I just, uh, so even YouTube's got their like, their form that you fill out okay. if you've got a copyright claim to make. So I just yeah. filled it out, linked my video, linked the video, yeah. the M24 video, and yeah. uh, literally within a day, it was sorted. So okay. I might have got lucky, I might not, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, would you say there's any hostility between you and them or is it just kind of like, it, it uh, happened, we got over it? Kind of I wouldn't thing? say hostility because they didn't know okay. that it was stolen because it was the producer that yeah. took the melody and then sent M24 the beat. Yeah. So it was more like, they didn't know. So as soon as they found out, they were like, oh cool, you should have just messaged us first, we would have sorted yeah. it. Okay. But I don't know whether, like, I don't know whether they would have done that. Yeah, I think, back in the yeah, I don't know what would have happened. So I, I'm still glad I went the route of taking the video yeah. down. Yeah. But yeah, they're not, I don't think it's a very hostile situation. Yeah. I mean, they understood what happened, so. Yeah. No, for, so obviously from what, from what I can see is everything was kind of handled diplomatically. Yeah. Which is always the best. best definitely, yeah. Sides. Um, so Migs, what can they expect in the future, man? Uh, hopefully big things, hopefully big things. I'm trying to just keep working, making beats, working with new artists, working with big artists currently, mm. like uh, the Desi mixtape that's coming in. I'm on the intro for that, so catch me on that. But um, that's big. yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> that does nicely. And that, again, it's not even so much about getting the money for it. It's the exposure. It's the like, yeah. people see our Migs beats on the Desi intro. Yeah. I'll get a lot of leases from it, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just always the big placements you could need to worry about with making beats. It's like you get random rappers on YouTube yeah. buying your beats. If you sell loads of leases, you can make if uh, the same amount of money, if not more, than mm. just getting like one good placement every now and again. So. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, and in terms of kind of your the the type of beats you create, which you reckon in the future you will be expanding to different genres. Uh, most likely, yeah. I feel. Um, recently I've been uh, trying to dive into the UK rap kind of thing, so like the faster yeah. 80 to 100 BPM beats, yeah. which I had a lot of fun, I've had a lot of fun doing because yeah. it's new. Yeah. When you get stuck making the same genre of beats, it does get a bit boring, a bit tedious. Yeah. So it's good to have a break from that genre, go to another genre. Yeah. And then when you do go back to the genre, you feel like you've progressed and you can yeah. bring something different. So that's a good way to like mix up genres is just try out all these genres. And then when you do make other beats, your sound should just naturally change, yeah. I think. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so we're going to go into a quick kind of um, session where you would demonstrate it to you. Cool, cool. You, you were kind of working on and give us a little bit of a breakdown. All right, cool. So 